<laughs> Welcome back. So last uh, video lecture we have discussed the process of formation of dicot embryo, right? So di uh, embryo is formed. Now from embryo a seed will form. Okay. And the next topic is seed. Now seed will form. Wait. What is seed? It's a mature ovule result in the formation of seed. Okay. The mature when the ovule become mature, then it will result in the formation of it will develops into seed. Okay. This is it. Mature, mature ovule form seeds. Okay, when the ovule become mature, and finally it will give rise into a seed. A seed has a layer. Again, this topic we have already discussed in the first year chapter: morphology of flowering plant. Okay, we'll just do a revision here. A seed is has seed has a cover layer. Seed has a cover layer known as what? Integument. So, integument structure we have already seen. So, seed has a cover layer known as integument. Next, what we need to know about seed is the study of seed is known as the study of seed is called as is called as. Spermology. Okay. Spermology. The next seed type. The types of seed. Again, we have already discussed in the first year. We are doing a revision here. So, seed type. We will see first seed in case of dicot and in case of monocot seed. See, we have uh, discussed the structure of formation of dicot embryo, not monocot embryo. Monocot embryo is not so important. So, we have discussed the structure of formation of dicot embryo. All right, dicot embryo is important. So, we have discussed. So, the types of seed in case of dicot and monocot is classified into two types endospermic and non endospermic. Endosperm and non endosperm. Same for monocot also. Endosperm and non endosperm. So, first year we have discussed example you write yourself with along with the definition. What is endosperm dicot seed? What is endosperm dicot seed? See, after the formation of embryo, okay, after the formation of embryo, if endosperm is still there inside the embryo cell, if we still find endosperm, what is endosperm? Nutritive tissue which give nutrition to the developing embryo, right? If after the formation of embryo, if the endosperm is still there, then we call it as a endosperm dicot seed. For example, yourself. In case of non-endosperm, if after the formation of dicot embryo, if there is no endosperm at all, so after the formation of embryo, all the endosperm endosperm are utilized by the embryo if there is no more em, uh, endosperm at all then we call it as a non endosperm dicot seed example write yourself same for monocot also if after the formation of embryo if the endosperm is still there if you still find embryo then we call it as a dicot or oh sorry monocot endosperm monocot seed example very common example coconut you might have seen coconut or no. So, non endosperm monocot, if after the formation of embryo, if there is no endosperm, we find if there is no endosperm, if the endosperm is utilized by embryo, then we call it as a non endosperm monocot seed. Okay, understood? They are the types of embryo. Right definition along with the example, few examples. So, remember few characters of the seed are what give rise into seed, the material will give rise into a seed. Then study of seed is known as permology. It has a, a cover layer known as integument. Integument. Okay. So these are the seeds. So next we will discuss fruits. Now which structure give rise into fruit? Which structure give rise into fruit? Mature ovary, mature ovary, the structure 
which is present outside the ovule, the mature ovary. Now, when the ovary become mature, it results in the formation of fruit. So, mature ovary form fruit. Okay. So, mature ovary form fruits. Hmm. So, next we need to know is the types of fruit. How many types of fruits are there? We have already discussed morphology of flowering plant, first year chapter, remember. So, we have simple fruit, aggregate fruit, aggregate and composite fruit. So, these are the types of fruit. Simple fruit, aggregate fruit and composite fruit. Okay. So, before that, before going to the types, wait, wait, wait. Before going to types of fruit, we need to know the layers of the fruit that is present. Wait, we'll come back to that. Okay. Before that, we need to know the layers of the fruit. The outer layer of the fruit is known as what? Outer layer and we have the middle layer and we have the inner layer. So, we need to know all those terms. The outer layer of the fruit, for example, let's take the example of mango. The outer layer of the mango is called what? Then just for our to understand. So, mango, the outer layer of the mango, the skin that we peel off, we do not eat, we do not consume the skin, right? The outer layer is known as epicarb. Epi means above. Okay? So, what we consume in case of mango? Which layer that we consume in case of mango? Outer or inner? Or middle? Middle, right? So, middle layer of the fruit we call as a major curve. We have already discussed. Major is middle. Okay, AP is the above layer. Then, inner layer of the fruit, inner layer of the fruit is known as endo curve. Okay, sometimes question asks for one mark depending on the nature, depending on the types of fruit, which layer that we consume. Okay, depending on the types of fruit, they may give you one example of fruit and they will ask which layer of that fruit is consumed. Suppose if they give the example of coconut, which layer of coconut did we consume? Tell me, upper layer that is epicarp, middle layer, mesocarp, or inner layer that is endocarp. In case of coconut, the epicarp of coconut is husk right it is made of fibers so we peel off that those fibers we do not consume outer layer the major curve is hard hard substance it is made of a hard very hard substance right again we do not consume middle layer inner layer the white white substances that is present along with the endosperm that structure is endocarp. So, in case of coconut, we consume endosperm. So, depending on the types of fruit, sometimes the question asks for one mark. So, which layer of that, which fruit is consumed? Okay. So, these are the layers of fruit. Remember, epi means above. Remember, you are not allowed to forget. Very easy to remember. Major means middle. If you forget this M words, remember the M means middle, M, major. So, endo means inside. You already know. Carp is the layer. The name, the carp means layer. So, then come to the types of fruit. So, fruits are classified into three types. Simple fruit, aggregate fruit, aggregate, and then composite, composite fruit. So, simple aggregate and composite. Definition, you already know. We have already discussed in the first year. We are doing a revision here. Simple fruit, if the fruit is developed from single ovary of a single flower. If the fruit is developed from a single pistil, okay, if the single pistil of a single flower, we call it as a simple fruit. Example, homework definition, along with the example, write yourself. Aggregate fruit, if the fruit is developed, if the fruit is developed from many pistil of a single flower, if a fruit is developed from many pistil of a single flower, then we call it as an aggregate. Composite, if the fruit is developed from entire inflorescence, we call it as a what? It's composite fruit. What is inflorescence again? The arrangement of flower on a floral axis. So, first year, everything faster. So, you already know this. So, definition 
with example few example write by yourself so these are the types of fruit so seeds then fruits we have discussed some extra thing we need to know so when the fertilization takes place then embryo is formed then embryo right when the fertilization takes place embryo is formed then embryo give rise to uh, uh, yeah first before embryo after fertilization it give rise to zygote then zygote give rise to embryo right then you give rise to seeds then fruits that is that takes place after fertilization only when fertilization happens then only the fruit will form the seed will form the embryo will form right but there are some fruit which is formed without the fertilization okay there are some fruit formed without the fusion of male and female gamete those fruit are known as parthenocarpic fruit and the process is known as parthenogenesis so these are some extra thing that you need to know <clears throat> parthenocarpi fruit will be formed only when the fertilization will take place okay when the fertilization that is the fusion of male and female gamete will take place then only the formation of zygote will form then zygote will give rise to embryo then embryo will give rise to seed then the fruit will form right only it happens when the fertilization takes place but if there is no fertilization takes place the embryo will not form naturally but there are some fruit exception okay in biology we always find exception there are some fruit that is formed without fertilization that fruit is known as parthenocarpic fruit and the process is known as parthenogenesis okay the fruit what is parthenocarpy the fruit which is formed you write by yourself nice sentence okay the fruit which is formed without fertilization the fruit which is formed without fertilization that fruit is known as parthenocarpic fruit okay and the process is known as parthenogenesis parthenogenesis process example natural parthenocarpic fruit example natural example very common example banana but again there is an exception in banana some banana has a seed okay in their uh, body some banana contains seed but mostly the banana is formed without fertilization without the fusion of male and female gamete this is the example of natural parthenocarpic fruit now it can be done artificially also okay if you do not want a seed in a particular fruit if you do not consume that seed it can be made into a seedless fruit okay it, it can be done artificially by a human if you want to make uh, any fruit that we do not contain any seed we, it can be done into a seedless okay and a process is known as parthenogenesis it can be done into a seedless by giving some hormones okay like for example grapes grapes one important fruit which is made artificially before grape it contains seed in the body but it is done artificially seed are removed made it seedless now it is made into a seedless fruit see knowing knowledge is good but how to where to apply is more important if we consume seeds and that we made it into a seedless then what is the use of it right so scientists are doing this in watermelon nowadays it's been doing now uh, it's been doing since very long year so these are parthenocarpi what is parthenocarpi the fruit which is formed without fertilization is known as parthenocarpic fruit and the process is known as parthenogenesis the natural example of parthenocarpic fruit banana artificially example of parthenocarpic grapes and there are many so write few of it uh, example by yourself okay these are parthenocarpi next important thing what we need to know so we have known that uh, mature ovary give rise into a fruit mature ovary develops into fruit okay then we call that fruit as a true fruit only when the fruit is developed from the mature ovary then we call it as a true fruit there are some point that you need to know some topic true fruit what is true fruit 
only when the fruit is developed from the mature ovary then we call that fruit as a true fruit okay most of the fruit develop from ovary only most of the fruit develop on from ovary only so what is true fruit true fruit are those fruit which are developed from mature ovary okay ovule give rise to seed remember don't get confused ovule seed ovary fruit so only those fruit which develop from the ovary we call it as a true fruit and most of the fruit develop from mature ovary but there are some fruit that they do develop from other parts of the plant body okay some fruit that develop from other parts of the plant body rather than ovary we call that fruit as a false fruit the fruit which is developed from other parts of the plant body rather than ovary we call it is a false fruit one very common example always ask for one more apple apple do not develop from ovary apple develop from thalamus part of the plant body apple it develops from thalamus not from ovary what is thalamus thalamus the structure which holds all the reproductive holes in their body okay thalamus it is also known as a receptacle the other name oh that day i have written only receptacle right it has other name also thalamus it is also called as thalamus receptacle so in case of apple do not develop from the mature ovary it develops from the thalamus part of the plant body okay so this is true fruit and false fruit parthenocarpy so with this we have completed this chapter right very easy very conceptual and very important uh, question always come from this chapter so what you need to do is you need to complete all those notes and whatever the question is given in your NCRT book solve all the question from your NCRT book all right so I will check your copy when you come to class when we meet again then I will check your copy whether you have written or not please write it down and make sure that you make all notes and diagram in your copy okay so till now what we have discussed let's go a quick revision of it first we have seen the structure of flower right where all the male and female reproductive structure are present and we have classified flower into accessory holes and reproductive holes right so accessory hole uh, sorry essential hole and accessory hole so essential holes which structure is known as essential hole calyx and corolla what they do they protect the reproductive structure of the flower of the plant body that is male androsium and gynosium that is essential holes then accessory holes what is accessory holes what are the accessory holes androsium and gynosium which takes part in the reproduction okay so we have seen all the structure then we have seen the structure of enter so in most angiospermic plant the enter are bilobe structure okay in most angiospermic plant the enter are bilobe means we have the uh, enter has two lobe attached to it with the help of a tissue film uh, sterile connective tissue which attached with the filament but in few cases we also find one lobe okay there is two lobe and one lobe only we do not exit further not more than two lobe okay there is only two or one but most cases two lobe we find so we have classified enter on the basis of their attachment and we have classified enter on the basis of the number of lobes monotychus and dithecus we have seen and then we have classified on the basis of the attachment with filament the attachment is done with the help of a tissue known as sterile connective tissue we have seen we have seen then attachment dorsifix basifix adenate and versatile enter right then we have seen this ts of enter that is the internal structure of enter we have seen we don't have to explain again i'll just going a quick revision of it so ts of enter we have seen so transverse section of enter enter has inside the enter we have four microsporangia one structure is known as microsporangium right so my four microsporangia we have then it has four layers the upper layer is known as epidermis the second layer is known as endodermis endothesium and the middle layers parenchyma and then the fourth layer tapetum which is very important the tapetum it give, it is a nutritive tissue it gives nutrition to the developing embryo and then form a ubis body known as sporopollenin which is a highly resistant substance in the living world remember sporopollenin you you cannot forget sporopollenin it is a highly resistant substance in the living world it is extremely resistance to any environmental condition it is unbreakable and it makes the exine of the pollen grains 
tapetum. It also helps in the formation of pollen kit. We have seen the function of tapetum. So we have seen the structure, we have seen the layer. Then we have discussed the process of microsporogenesis. Microsporogenesis means the formation of, it is a process of formation of microspore. That is the male gamete. That is pollen grains. So if the question asks draw the structure of pollen grains, you just draw the structure of pollen grains nicely, okay? The inner layer, the outer layer. You don't have to draw the overall process. If the question asks draw the structure of pollen grains, okay? So specifically, so process of formation of male gamete that is uh, pollen grains are known as microsporogenesis, right? In case of microsporogenesis, what happens when they enter is young, all the cells inside the microsporangium known as archaeosporial cell are attached compactly with each other and when the enter when the enter become mature the microsporangium develops to its size it grow to its size become big we call it as a pollen sac and all the archaeosporial cells they separate from each other they grow to its size and we call it as a microspore mother cell microspore mother cell undergo one mitotic division it give rise into a microspore tetrad then microspore tetrad it separate from each other and give rise into microspores then microspore undergo one meiotic mitotic division first is meiotic okay then mitotic then mitotic division and give rise finally pollen grains pollen grain has two layer inner layer made up of known as intine made up of cellulose the outer layer is known as exine made up of sporopollenin which is highly resistant substance and then inside this pollen grains the nucleus divide into two the generative cell which takes part in the reproduction it is bigger in size and then vegetative cell which help in the formation of pollen tube it is smaller in size that is pollen grain done then after pollen grains formation of male gamete we have discussed the formation of female gamete the process is known as megasporogenesis the process of formation of megaspore that is female gamete that is embryo sac oh wait before that we have seen the structure of female reproductive organ right so structure of female reproductive organ that is ovule we have seen the structure of ovule so ovule is the female reproductive organ inside the ovule the embryo sac is formed okay don't get confused when you study everything will be clear so structure of female reproductive organ is ovule the structure of ovule we have seen there is only one pistil we say monocarpellary if two or many we say multicarpellary so we have seen the structure of ovule the tissue that is present at a, the tissue that helps in attachment of ovule with ovary is known as placenta. The ovule is present inside the ovary only. Okay. Then ovule has two layer integument, outer integument and inner integument known as bitegmid. Then the upper region is known as chalazar, lower region is known as micropyle, and inside we have new cellar cell. Okay, so structure we have seen. Then we have seen the process of formation of female gametes known as embryo sac so megasporogenesis the process of formation of megaspore that is female gametophyte that is embryo sac so embryo sac when the again ovary become mature one of the new cellular cell towards the micropolar region undergo uh, it forms megaspore mother cell and it will undergo meiotic division and form megaspore tetrad out of four megaspore tetrad three degenerate one survive then one it gives rise into a and then with that one micro uh, yes megaspore it gives rise to a megaspore cell the megaspore cell undergo mitotic division followed by three time karyogenesis result in the formation of three nuclei and all and all we have discussed right the next after formation of female gametophyte pollen grains oh sorry pollination pollination so pollination transfer of pollen grains transfer of Microspore that is pollen grains from and third to the female reproductive organ. Okay, so pollen grain it is done by various agents in case of cross pollination. While the pollination is again classified into self and cross pollination. So we have seen cross pollination. Then after pollination, number eight, fertilization will take place. Where the fusion of male and female gamete will take place. So we have just discussed then number nine. And then after fertilization. Formation of dicot embryo. Formation of dicot embryo will take place, then the seeds will form, then the fruit will form, then we have seen some extra topic. Right? So with this we have discussed the overall chapter reproduction in flowering plant. Alright. Important. All those topics are important. Okay, remember. So we have discussed all those. So with this we have completed the entire chapter, our second chapter, reproduction in flowering plant.
so in next video lecture we will discuss another chapter okay bye